Mira la izquierda. Mira la derecha. ¿Qué ves? ¿Dónde estás? In a world that seems to change daily, what will you do next? Welcome to the Next Steps Show with Peter Vasquez and co-host Aisha Kreutz. A starting point for discussion y un poco de dirección. Bienvenidos, soy yo, el conservative New Yorican Peter Vasquez, here in the YSL studios with... The extraordinary machine, the mayor of Realville, Aisha Kreutz. Hey, you got it. What's up, Aisha? What's up? ¿Cómo estás, mi hermana? Nada mucho. You know, mi familia I, tu es familia. mi amor. Mi familia es mi amor también. Sí, y guess what? Tu familia es mi amor también. Ah, también, para mí. Para ti. Yeah. Sí, 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 sí. Okay. Not to be mistaken with we share families or nothing, listeners. Just saying I love her family. And I love his Matthew family. Matthew Croyd, author Matthew Croyd, just saying, because he's written some great books. You got to check out. What are they called? Uh, Untamed Fury. Well, yeah, Untamed Fury series. And where does he get them? Or Amazon. Them? <laughs> Amazon, ladies and gentlemen, but check it out. Soon, and I won't share too many of the beans, soon you'll be seeing those in bookstores. You are, actually, Near yes. you. So, you know, Aisha, hey, good morning, Bob. Howdy doodles. Howdy doodles. Guys, you know, I've been... Oakley doakley. <laughs> I've, been, I've been listening to music all my life. And what I love about music is that it truly, in my opinion, shares some of the... Some of what we don't see in society, I think. So this morning, I'm going to start off the show just laying a base because we've got some phenomenal guests today that are doing great things. They are truly a solution that needs to be heard right here and afar. But I want to lay a foundation because sometimes our leaders, in you know, regardless of whether they're political or faith-based or whatever, seem to think that this issue hasn't been around for a while. Issues of feeling left out, right? In the black and brown community, we deal with some some crazy things sometimes, right? And I know we deal with it in all society, but sometimes it just seems more. And when you look at the numbers, these are populations that are disproportionately uh, sometimes uh, dealing with issues of crime and poverty and everything else we're going to talk about. But check it out. The song I'm going to play is by rapper Slick Rick. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, I said rapper. This is 1988. Yeah. But I get the story more. Y'all tucked in? Here we go. Once upon a time, not long ago, when people wore pajamas and lived life slow, we laws were stern and justice stood, and people were behaving like they ought to good. They lived a little boy who was misled by another little boy, and this is what he said. Me and you tonight, we're gonna make some cash Robbing old folks and making the dash They did the job, money came with ease But one couldn't stop, it's like he had a disease He robbed another Stick and up, another and my sister and a brother Tried to rob a man who was a DT undercover The cop grabbed his arm, he started acting erratic He said, keep still boy, no need for static Punched him in his belly and he gave him a slap But little did he know the little boy was strapped The kid pulled out a gun, he said, why'd you hit me? The bow was set straight for the cop's kidney. The cop got scared, the kitty starts to figure. I'll do years if I pull this trigger. So he cold dashed and ran around a block. Cop radios into another lady cop. He ran by a tree, there he saw the sister. Shot for the head, he shot back, but he missed her. Looked around good and from expectations, he decided he'd hit for the subway stations. But she was coming and he made a left. He was running top speed till he was out of breath. Knocked an old man down and swore he killed Sorry. him. Then he made his move to an abandoned building Ran up the stairs up to the top floor Opened up a door there, guess who he saw? Who? Dave the dope be shooting dope Who don't know the meaning of water nor soap He said, I need bullets, hurry up, run The dope fiend brought back a spanking shotgun He went outside, but there was cops all over Then he dipped into a car, a stolen Nova Raced up the block doing 83 Crashed into a tree near university Escaped alive, though the car was battered rat a tat tat and all the cops got Ran out of bullets and he still had static Grabbed the pregnant lady and pulled out the automatic 
Pointed out her head, he said the gun was full of lead. He told the cops, back off, for honey, here's dead. Deep in his heart, he knew he was wrong. So he let the lady go and he starts to run on. Sirens sounded, he seemed astounded. And before long, the little boy got surrounded. He dropped his gun, so went the glory. And this is the way I have to end this story. He was only 17 what? in a madman's dream. The cops shot the kid, I still hear him scream. This ain't funny, so don't you dare laugh. Just another case about the wrong path. Straight and arrow or your soul gets cast. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to hear those words in the context of its time. Again, this song came out in 1998. But you know, if that song came out in 2003, it would be just as relevant today. So, leaders, faith, political, business owners, understand these issues are not new. We don't have to play guessing games as to how or where we can find solutions because there are solutions here and now. And guess what? These are solutions that help an individual find that balance between faith, politics, and entrepreneurship, taking ownership of their lives so that they can overcome. Incarceration doesn't mean incarcerated for life. It means that you made a mistake, you paid the consequences, and now we come together to help you, to build you. As a matter of fact, on this show, you've heard me say many a times, as we walk our walk, as we say what we got to say, we got to remember that we are influencers in all the things that we do. Someone is always watching. Someone is always reacting. So before you go, Right. And say that you don't care or say that you do care or whatever the case may be. Remember, those words are going to have an impact. Hey, check this out. In Matthew verses 34 to 40 says this. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry. And you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothes you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go visit you? The king replied, Truly I tell you, whether you did for, uh, whether you did for me, excuse me, whether you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Ladies and gentlemen, what you do, what you say matters. And what you do and what you say for others is the most important thing that you can do so long as you breathe. So today, I'm thrilled to have some guest, right? I'm thrilled to introduce a faith-driven enterprise that transforms setbacks into comebacks for individuals battling incarceration, addiction, and poverty. Again, that song that I played, over 30 years old, right? And remember, like all songs, they show something, they express something in our society that they're trying to get off their chest and talk about, right? Their mantra is hope works. They don't just say it. They prove it by operating multiple businesses with a social cause at their heart. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that's what I said. A corporation who's making money with a social cause at their heart, and that corporation, ladies and gentlemen, is Hope Initiatives. And at the helm is the Honorable Dale Sedwick, a leader with over 20 years of high-performance strategy experience, ranging from the corridors of Xerox to the halls of Robert Wesleyan College, or university, I should say. And by the way, she also has a degree in mathematics and still dedicates her time to nurturing her faith right there in downtown Rochester. And with her today, we have Dr. Vanessa Milton, who is the, and correct me if I'm wrong, the director of their workforce initiative program called Hope Works. Ladies, Dale and Dr. Hilt, uh, uh, Dr. Milton, welcome. Bienvenido al Next Step Show. 
Thank you, and good morning. Oh, good morning to you. Good morning, Dr. Milton. <laughs> yes, all that to say we had some great But guys, thanks for coming on Because you guys and what you're doing over at Hope Initiatives And in full disclosure, once upon a time I, I had the privilege of working with Dale On the board of directors with them uh, Doing some great things We've seen this organization go from its inception To where it is today And you guys have taken it to, to places Now, when we talk about social enterprise We're talking about, like I said, a company a regular company making money with a purpose of giving back. Is that even possible? Ladies, I'm going to ask you that question shortly. So, you want to start off? Yeah. Sure. So, tell, I mean, you know, you're one of my, I love Dale, uh, one of my favorite people. Um, and you guys know, you know, I don't say that often, um, but she really is, right? Um, that introduction is not even good enough i don't think i'm serious i mean like if, if we had a longer than an hour we could really talk about um a lot of this stuff and just the trailblazer that she is but tell us a little bit about yourself um you know what you're doing you know kind of like where you came from a little bit about that story i just said you know we only have an hour and introduce yourself to the people my pleasure it'll be brief um as Peter said, I spent uh, many, many years in corporate America, about 37 years in corporate America, and um, for the past six years at, have been at Hope Initiatives. Um, definitely a, a different sort of journey, uh, but a journey nonetheless. I um, found myself actually looking for employment at the end of the 31 years with Xerox, and I uh, was given the opportunity to, to come to Hope Initiatives to, uh, to lead the organization. Are you it's from a, Rochester? I am not from Rochester. Originally from Virginia. Okay. Um, have been in Rochester, though, pretty much all of my adult life. I won't say how many years. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say it's close to 40 years uh, what uh, was, that I've actually been in, in Rochester. What yeah. was growing up, you know, like we're two-parent home? Like, I mean, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, kind of what I'll was your... Yeah. Um, so growing up was, uh, it was interesting. Um, my parents uh, divorced when I was pretty young. And so I grew up uh, in a home with my, uh, my mom, my sister, my grandparents. Um, we grew up in a poor neighborhood. And um, I was telling someone recently that one of my early memories was of a, uh, a child, two children actually, who died in a fire in the house next door to mm. ours. Um, their mother was an alcoholic. She went out to get a drink. Um, on a very snowy, cold day. We don't have a whole lot of those. When that particular <laughs> one was a cold and snowy day, she went out to get a drink, left a kerosene can on top of the stove to keep the kids warm. They bothered the can, apparently, and the house went up in flames. And so um, that was an early early, uh, early memory, um, but it sticks with you. And um, you think, well, what's, yeah, it's, it's obviously horrible um, for the kids to have lost their lives. But then you also think about that mother and think, my gosh, what was her life like after that? Oh. And so um, I think that's probably where my interest in seeing lives restored actually began, um, because I, I just thought, you know, what is this? What is she going to go through mm. um, for the rest of her life? And so you hope the kids are in the hands of God. Um, but what is she going to go through and um, how does she get help to recover um, from not just her immediate um, habit, um, but just how does she put the rest of her life together? Yeah, absolutely. Right. Knowing that you were responsible for the death of your of children, your children, right? And exactly. then how that, you know, whether or not you go to jail, don't, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like all of that, what happened and how old were you oh, around gosh. that time? I was probably only maybe six years old okay. or so. Yeah. yeah so it really, really was young. something that carried through mm -hmm. with you. Your absolutely. Whole life. And just, um, same thing. Hold on one second. Where... Can you tell us just, you know, like where you were, you know, where do you, um, yeah. reintroduce her. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. So, uh, Dr. Vanessa Milton, mm -hmm. um, same, you know, like where, I don't know, where were you raised? Where did you come from? And, you know, give us that, that little stuff. background. Okay. Um, well, first of all, I was, um, I'm a Rochester native. Okay. Um, I'm a Rochester native who did not like being cold. Um, so, <laughs> so, and um, I grew up in, um, unfortunately now, which is the highest um, um, uh, child poverty rate in New York State, which is 14605 area. Okay. Um, that was home for me. 
um, with a for most of the time. Um, is that like single Bay mother. Street? It's is that like North East Street, side? Helena. Yes, yeah, the okay, East Side. East side mm-hmm, yep. Okay. Yep. Um, and so um, it is worse now, but back then, um, you know, we were pretty um, uh, multicultural. Okay. When I was growing up, you know, um, Miss Jenny, the um, older Italian woman, lived next door, and Maria uh, across the street, my best friend, was Puerto Rican. And then, you know, they, so there was a, 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 a mixture of individuals and cultures in my community. Was, um, it, was it as poor as it is now, or was no, it was no. it a poor community at all? It it was a what you would call a poor community, yes, okay. but it wasn't. Uh, it, depressed. It, it the wasn't way it is it, now. as depressed as it is. Okay. Now, um, so I and I grew up in that area, and I, you know, I, uh, in my family and others, faced all of the um, issues that are being faced tonight: teen pregnant sister, uh, you know, delinquent brother, or, you know, things of that nature. Were you bad? Drugs and everything. No, I was a good girl. <laughs> <You're okay. laughs> that saved me. <laughs> um, I was I was the obedient one, so that pretty much saved me. Um, but. Um, it you know you don't know how things affect you how much they affect you and how they're going to affect you know, affect you the rest of your life. Um, I actually graduated, got my undergrad degree from Al- SUNY Albany. Okay. Um, and, and what did you get it in? Um, I got my degree in sociology. Um, okay. In um, Albany, and um, but I I still didn't like being cold, and uh, someone told me about the this land of honey and everything in Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> um, <laughs> And uh, in addition to that, um, something called an HBCU, Historically Black College mm-hmm. and University. And um, I wanted to experience those things. And I wanted to get away from Rochester, to be honest with you. Um, mostly the cold, but also some of the situations yeah. um, that were happening. And um, so I went to graduate school in Albany, in Atlanta and majored in um, social work, but policy planning and administration. Um, and I, I pretty much concentrated on um, understanding the um, juvenile delinquency arena. And um, as a result of that, also was able to do my research in an area called Liberty City mm-hmm. in Miami, Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I did that for six months. So I kept getting warmer and warmer. Um, <laughs> and so I was so happy. <laughs> and, um, and I did that, and it just it just fueled me a little bit more. Um, got married there, moved to Detroit for a few years. And, again, uh, was introduced to a program called Head Start mm. and was able to become the social service manager for the city of Detroit's Head Start program, which at the time had 5,000 children. And um, I learned that that the importance of the parenting process um, and working with children as early as possible in their lives. But uh, that, again, family engagement and all that that Right, no matter what it is, no matter what program it is, without the base of the family. uh, That family engagement has to be number one, um, which I find that Rochester does not have enough Mm -hmm. of that part. And so you can't work with youth and not understand where they come from and start working at the the root that we're missing, working with the root. I, I, I may have missed it, but you're, yes. you're a doctor. Yeah, I have a PhD. MD, PhD. A PhD. In, in, may I ask P- in what discipline? Mm-hmm. Or Social what work, policy, planning, and administration. Wow. Yeah. So, you should run for office. No, I should not. That's what we need is I people who not. understand. I, I, should, I should not. Right? No. Like, yeah, yeah. No, no. Uh, and so, no. But interesting, but my, my concentration in that is um, leadership development. Okay. Um, so, you know, but, but I came, I, I stayed away for 40 some odd years. Um, because I enjoyed being warm, although I came home every year just for a week, probably um, during Christmas. <laughs> <In the summer. laughs> during Christmas. Christmas, that was the problem. Yeah, that but, was the problem. That's why you stayed for forty years because you're like, why am I here for a week? And I, I did. <laughs> Should have came in the I summer. Did. I know yeah. you would have been reinvigorated. Yeah. To come. But, but, yeah, but I started hearing so much about what was happening to Rochester now, and um, a stronger force than myself pushed me back. Okay, so I've been back for seven months. I've been really researching and listening and getting an idea of why, how, just what is going on. And that's what led me to um, Hope Hope Initiatives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is a freaking phenomenal program in itself. Again, when we talk about solutions and solutions that don't get enough uh, backing or, Mm -hmm. you know, information, you know, like Mm -hmm. it's it's like the government – 
only wants solutions that is going to perpetuate poverty instead of <laughs> keep it. it you like. know, it's like a you know, yeah, being but, poverty pinned. But, but I, the, wait, wait, real quick. I wanted to go back. Um, you had said something about family engagement. There's not enough in Rochester, and I just wanted to point out. I was at a, um, it's like a a group the school superintendents. They come together and they um, once a year and they talk about different things. What what could happen, right? Uh, all across New York State. And I went and sat in on one a couple of years ago, and I was absolutely just flabbergasted because all of these people were sitting right in the room, maybe 500 um, people across New York State educators, and they were coming up with different solutions, all these things. One in that whole room, um, it, last name is Went, superintendent out in the rural area um, at the time. One stood up and said, talked about programs that had more to do with engaging parents into the system. Everything else was longer school days, was you know feeding the kid. All of these, yeah. all these solutions, but Band-Aids. only one had parents at the center of it. So I just wanted to point that out, how our policies are. Yeah. But I know that... When we get back from break, I want to talk a little bit about the issue of trauma and how Hope Initiative is really focusing there. And then we're going to dig right into your program. Ladies and gentlemen, you are listening to The Next Step Show. Ahimi Mito and YSL and Evan C. ¿Por qué? Porque yo soy el conservative New Yorican con mi amiga. Aisha Price. Y we'll be right back. Regres- And the Next Step Show brought to you proudly by Ryan Murphy and Associates Commercial and Residential Realty Appraisal and Consulting on the WYSL stations. Don't go away. Eisen Rochester is a full service ophthalmology office. And we specialize in general ophthalmology, uh, taking care of people from childhood to adult uh, and seniors. We do general eye exams. We specialize in cataract surgery, corneal surgery, and disease, as well as LASIK surgery. We also have a full service optical shop and contact lens fitting service. Visit Eyes on Rochester at 1157 Fairport Road. The fair tax replaces the income tax and abolishes the IRS for good. But that's not going to happen if the current crop of politicians have their way. Fair Tax New York is looking for motivated citizens who are willing to contact candidates and get them to sign the fair tax pledge, promising to push for fair tax if elected. Call Fair Tax New York at 585-944-0588. That's 585-944-0588. Make that call today. Patriots, take a stand at the God and Country Awakening event of Monroe County. Come support Marcusini and others as we gather to take back our county. It's now our only backstop to progressives in Albany. You'll also hear from several influential pastors that will make the case that the church must re-engage in politics and government. Sunday, September 24th, 5 p.m., the Italian American Community Center in Gates. Just a $10 ticket. Contact Mark at markforcountyexecutive.com and take a stand. Hi, this is attorney Christine Demo Vasquez. For more than 18 years, I've provided quality legal services tailored to the unique needs of each of my clients. I take the time to educate my clients about the law, explain the legal process, listen carefully, answer questions, and keep my clients informed throughout the process. An attorney who understands the complexities of the family court system, call attorney Christine Demo Vasquez at 585-427-0675. 585-427-0675. Peter Vasquez and Aisha Kreutz, The Next Step Show. On the WYSL stations. Hit it! Welcome back to the next step show, and yet yeah, here comes the hot stepper. That's me, conservative New Yorkian. Ah, just kidding, 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 kidding. So, in studio, we still have Dale Sedwick, the executive director of Hope Initiatives, right in Rochester, New York, serving all over the place. We also have with her the director of their Hope Work Program, Dr. Vanessa Milton. Ladies, thank you for staying with us. 
Absolutely. So I want to talk a little bit about trauma because, you know, one of the things um, that I've learned over the years, especially uh, over the last couple of years, my wife's running for family court judge, Christine Dimo Vasquez. She's running for family court judge. And, and one of the things that we have found across the board, across the county, is that there are so many programs that are either underutilized or underfunded or, 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 or in my opinion, kind of worse, um, either misrepresented or not represented at all. Ignored. Right? Or ignored. So, mm -hmm. and then the worst, worst, worst thing of it all is that I haven't really seen some of the programs that are being advertised addressing the issue of trauma. And that is one of the things that attracted me to Hope Initiative way back when, when I was invited to sit on the board. If I remember, our, if you remember our conversation, I said, Dale, I'm not a bobblehead type of uh, board member if we're going to do this. But the more I learned about it, and I remember the one day at a board meeting, Dale, you challenged the board and said, hey, what's everybody write down the mission statement? I don't remember who, I know I didn't remember it. I was like, oh, this is a humiliating to me. Um, but that is so important because we do have a mission, and the mission of a nonprofit um, should always be to meet their mission. And you can't do that if we're not addressing the issue of trauma. In your story, you had talked about, you know, when you were introducing an issue that you dealt with mm -hmm. and, and, and how she lost her children, right? And the thing is, I see a lot, right, where that parent losing your child, I'd lose my mind. Mm -hmm. Right. But when you I see a lot of times when when situations like that have led that individual to to not always a great path. Right. right? And then everybody puts them off like like they're crazy. Right. And in the black and brown community, it, especially for those of, that grew up in the city, I grew up there. I seen it. We get put off as a problem sometimes. Oh, he, I remember my niece almost died. She dresses the part that everybody would think of that would live in the middle of the ghetto or what they call the ghetto. She went to, to one of the local hospitals. Uh, um, she had a, a, an aneurysm. Mm -hmm. They sent her home because they told her, and literally they treated her like crap because they thought she was just doing drugs. And she went to another hospital the next morning. They told her she's definitely a miracle baby. because. But you see, it's those kind of things that create trauma. Mm -hmm. And it's not being addressed. So can we talk a little bit about Hope Initiatives? Let's get into Hope Initiatives, uh, the mission of Hope Initiatives, and then how it addresses it uh, wholeheartedly, and then how the work program, because that's a fairly new program that you have. Yeah. And then how is it that you operate without the billions of dollars that most nonprofits get from the state, mm -hmm. if we can? Because you guys do some amazing work. So um, I'll start with our mission, and that is, as you said earlier, I believe, to restore lives that have been damaged by incarceration, by substance use um, disorders, um, or by poverty. Um, our, our vision, our goal is to try to see individuals who have been receivers to become givers. And so what do I mean by that? Mm -hmm. um, individuals who have been dependent upon our social services system, et cetera, just for their basic necessities, we want to see them go from just surviving to thriving to the point where they can then turn around and give yes. and uh, be of benefit um, to themselves, to their families, and, um, and to their communities. And so we do that in, in a couple of ways. First of all, we meet the immediate needs of individuals to help them live humanely. And we do that by providing um, furniture, household goods, appliances, moving and storage services to individuals. Usually those individuals are, are identified to us by the Department of Human Services. We work in partnership with them um, and sometimes by other agencies who provide um, supportive uh, services for, for their clients. And so in that way, we're, we're kind of meeting those immediate needs. No one is going to think about their, their – oftentimes not about their, their children, their – um, career or anything like that if those basic things, if I don't have a place to lay my head at night, if I can't, you know, eat with utensils or yes, yeah. or cook my food or, or do laundry without having to worry about, you know, taking my kids and finding money to go to a laundromat, they just aren't concerned about some other things until those basic needs are taken care of. And so we work um, to take care of those, those basic needs. And that's a program that really does help to sustain us financially. It does sustain us financially for the most part. Um, but we don't want to stop there. We don't ever want to leave people where they are. Mm -hmm. And so we operate the uh, the Hope Works program. And as you said, Peter, it's a fairly new program. We started it in 2022. Um, and the objective there is to give it opportunities uh, to individuals to have a fresh start. And so we, um, you know, we're a small organization. Um, we provide jobs when we can, but we don't do that often because we are so small. But what we can do is invite individuals in to begin to develop those work skills that they may have never had, 
may have never developed or that they've just lost track of as they've gone through traumatic situations in their lives. And so the program is designed to provide um, occupational skills, um, taking advantage of what we do. And by the way, I didn't mention that we build the furniture that we provide to individuals, and then we leverage that infrastructure as a way to provide some occupational training in basic carpentry and woodworking and welding and, and so forth. And we layer on top of that uh, employment skills training. And so things that employers Amazing. always look for, mm-hmm. good communications, showing up on time, being dependable, um, showing initiative, being able to follow instructions. Those are things that a lot of times we take for granted, but they don't come naturally if you haven't been in a work environment. And so we, we, pair, we uh, marry those two together. We allow individuals to work actually in our workshop and so the program is unique in that you, you predominantly learn by doing. Um, you have the opportunity to apply some of those employment skills as you are building furniture. And by the way, you're helping other people at the same time. And so it all kind of works together. Um, and by the way, sometimes when you're helping others, it helps you to heal mm-hmm. absolutely as well. And so ideally, you're discovering that you're an individual who has God-given strengths and gifts and talents you can make a difference, you can be positive, you can do positive things, and you can get connected to employment. And so, actually, I don't know, Vanessa, she's the director of the program, so maybe you want to... Is everybody that comes through previously incarcerated? Not everyone. Okay. Yep, not everyone. Um, As I said, it could be a variety of backgrounds. Okay. Um, It's everyone, anyone 18 and up, who has been challenged um, in their endeavor to find work. Yep. And so we we welcome them and try to and we don't we're not finished with them until they are connected until they're fit, right. until they're working and <laughs> are they usually placed with you or is it people can walk in a mixture of both how does that work I love Vanessa yeah. well um, be, be, before you get into that if I can I wanted to ask one quick question if I may because every I mean everything and it's for both of you but but you you, you teach a lot of technical skills I'm so, and I remember correctly if I were if I remember correctly you teach financial or literacy uh, literacy and so forth but there's a faith component to everything you guys are doing can you just right. shed a little light on that for our listeners yep historically we've connected we've conducted a Bible study every day um, every morning at the beginning of our, our work day um, we haven't done it in the last few weeks but so we need to get back to that but um, we typically would conduct a Bible study, but the thing is we, we, are, we are anxious to share Christ, uh, share the gospel with anyone who is interested. We don't force it on anyone, but our firm belief is that your, your path to healing and certainly to stability is very much closely related to your relationship with Christ. Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's so that, that to us is, is kind of the, the foundation um, that we build upon. It's the mindset that we bring to what we to, to our interactions yep. with individuals, and we also try to make sure that we um, that our culture reflects just Christ-like behavior. Um, whether it is seeing a person for who they were created to be, um, for what they are, have within them, the potential that they have within them, and not looking down on them in any way, mm-hmm. uh, regardless of what their background um, has entailed. Um, they are a child of God, as far as we're concerned. So they have potential as long as they're still on this earth. Thank you, Doe, and I and I and I thank you really for highlighting that because that is the foundation of healing of trauma, of identifying trauma. Because again, without understanding that balance of faith, politics, and entrepreneurship, mm-hmm. where do you begin? So, 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 Dr. Milton, I apologize for interrupting you there. That is a I, I want to hear a lot about that, and then I got a question for you, especially with your degrees. But please, the work, the Hope Work Program. Okay. Yeah, well, we make you work on this show. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I did want to address, though, the, the issue of trauma. Um, and um, poverty breeds trauma. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, today, more than before, I think when I was growing up in um, 05, um, we, uh, when they talk about a village, it was more of a village. Um, there was a, a, a different type of um, values were different. Um, uh, uh, other uh, people in your neighborhood were friends. Um, we, they looked out for, you know, you hear a lot of older people saying they mm-hmm. looked out for or, you know, mm-hmm. things of that nature. So they did. My mom used to always say, you know, birds of a feather flock together. So watch who you're, you know, who you're mm-hmm. around. Um, and so trauma does. And in the case of the individuals that um, that we work with now, um, who for the all the majority of them are coming out of um, impoverished conditions. And so they come with some experience of trauma, if nothing else, because of the violence 
that all of them are experiencing that violence. And have and been for a long time because as the been. show, as that song that I played show, yes. more than 30 years old. Yes, yes. And and violence is trauma. Yes. It, it, the, the, those individuals, whether or not you experience it or you know someone who's been, you know, involved in, in the system and so forth, um, that becomes traumatic. Um, I have a nephew who he, I took him somewhere the other day and he's just going to the first grade and he's telling me about the, um, the gangs that, you know, my dad doesn't want my brother to, we're trying to keep him away from the, and he's telling me the name of the gangs and we're driving and I'm like, how does he, I didn't know the names of gangs or anything. So all of our individuals that we work with for all intents and purposes, because of just general impoverishment, um, and or because that plus the communities they come from, um, they do experience some trauma. Yes. And so um, Ms. Sedgwick knows one of my things that I talk about a lot of that mental health um, issue and trying to get not just mental health services, but mental health services that are culturally um, sensitive. And I'm glad you mentioned that because culturally or culture is probably, in my opinion, one of the last things that most policymakers even consider. And I can, I mean, we don't have the time on today's show, but yeah. this was even shown on a, uh, an, an issue I had when I was stationed, when I was in the military stationed uh, with kids running out that were under 13 and the policymakers not understanding that in Puerto Rico, because it happened to be around in Puerto Rico, it's not uncommon for a young child to go a couple towns over. Mm-hmm. So uh, anywho. Yeah. So that's important. So the, the um, individual that we work with, um, we we are mindful of the challenges that they're facing. Mm-hmm. But because mm-hmm. you said, you know, about Christ, right, the, the things are Christ centered. Um, I'm going to assume and correct me if I'm wrong. Right. But when you're talking about trauma, you're talking about helping deal with all these things and how you do that because it's from a Christ centered point of view, is it more, Hey, we understand you have the trauma, but you're not a victim and having the overcoming Mm -hmm. mentality. Or again, there's all of these policies normally like you can continue to live within that trauma and you know, it's okay because you went through all the, you know what I mean? Like, so I just want people to get a feel for kind of how you work through some of that. Well, definitely the overcoming. I, I, I let them hear my story. And right. said, you know, I was one of 11 of 12, and I was the first to go to college. And so, uh, you know, that, that doesn't mean you can't come out of right. and you can push past it. Right. Um, it doesn't mean that I didn't, you know, I tell them that anything that has been experienced uh, that you all are seeing in the, uh, you know, in your neighborhoods, and I've, you know, I've seen it. Um, I, I, and look uh, where I am and, now, right? Like that you have and I'm, this. And I'm not that special. Right. You know, it, I, you know I, I just dreamed more. I dreamed harder. Yeah. And I, I think, and so I did actually did an exercise with our group that we just started on Monday on dreaming. Mm. I had them sit there. What That's do you awesome. want to be? So I said, close right. your eyes and take the time to think about it. I said, I used to dream at night that I was in Florida. And I went to Florida. Yeah. <laughs> I used to well, and again, I, yeah, and I want that, our listeners to get that. That yes. when, sometimes when we hear, especially in today's day and age, when you start talking about these issues, right? People all of a sudden go to this place of, oh, you know, like we're not, you know, again, we, we you want to love on people, meet them where they're at, but then help them to exactly overcome it. what it is that they need to do, and that, that's why that Christ-centered piece is there, right? Is because we're talking to them. You are an overcomer. Don't let this pigeonhole so, you. So yeah. can we Go ahead. Oh, can we look at how your workforce development program uses that Christ-centered uh, approach to be able to get people back on their feet beyond the trauma? Because, I mean, the, the workforce development fits in only after someone has already began the healing processes and understand that they can work. Um, and you do that through everything you do. The, the new program, how does that fit in? Well, the, 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 the workforce development, the, the employability skills part of it, is really helping them to to adopt adapt some skills that are really just human skills that you have to have mm-hmm. if you're going to be That's working right. in a community of other people. Right. And so it's what employers want. You know, you have to be able to communicate properly with um, individuals. And I tell them, uh, as I told them the other day, it's not just something that you use on a job. It's something that you use at home. It's something that you use skills how to um, problem solve. Um, how to, you know, uh, uh, things of that, you know. So these aren't things that they, uh, of course, employees, employers want it because uh, all of us have to work with someone, you know, even if technology is your thing. 
Um, so um, we try to teach them skills that are transferable. Um, from not just the job, but to the home. And so when they go down into our woodworks area, they are able to then utilize those skills. And so we assess and we watch to see if those skills that we taught teamwork, teamwork is extremely important, whether you're on the job or you're in your home, if you're in a community, um, how do you work with other people? And so those skills are important down in that occupational skills area because then it helps them to retain them and then they can see if they're being applied and then when they come back to us and we're asking them questions well how uh, do, you, what, do you think that you've been um, using or showing teamwork skills and then we assess them and ask them in different situations we'll give them a little sheet that says okay this happened in this area and then they have to answer the question and then that's when we start talking about okay why would you th- this happen and so does that re- how does that relate to what you're learning here mm-hmm. um, right so and even like confrontation type of things is what you're saying right and like how you because again in different cultural Mm -hmm. situations right like i know you might be like dude don't talk to me like that right and you're you know i mean that's normal culturally here Mm -hmm. but when i'm going you know and then you're supervisor may be like oh you were just disrespectful right and being able to see the difference is like okay how do you transfer those over do they give do you guys give tours at all of hope initiatives and stuff like that let's talk about that and some other things when we get back from the break here on wysl the next step show you're listening to peter and aisha 92.1 fm 95.5 fm and 10.40 a.m. Rock on Harley Davidson and Rock on Power Sports, West Henrietta Road. Shop the greatest selection of legendary Harleys and save big on a wide array of used bikes. And Rock on Power Sports has rides from Honda, Kawasaki, and Yamaha. Rock on has a helpful staff to save you big money. The Rock on Service Department has expert technicians and a great supply of parts to get and keep you on two wheels. WYSL listeners get $500 off used motorcycles while supplies last. Rock On has side-by-sides, ATVs, and jet boats, too. Anything that's fun and goes fast. On and off-road and on the water, shop the all-new Rock On first. Rock On Harley-Davidson and Rock On Motorsports, 2600 West Henrietta Road. Open Tuesday through Saturday. Call 424-2120. Visit rockonharleydavidson.com. Hi, this is attorney Christine Demo Vasquez. For more than 18 years, I've provided quality legal services tailored to the unique needs of each of my clients. I take the time to educate my clients about the law, explain the legal process, listen carefully, answer questions, and keep my clients informed throughout the process. An attorney who understands the complexities of the family court system, call attorney Christine Demo Vasquez at 585-427-0675. 585-427-0675. Eighty-seven thousand new IRS agents are coming after small businesses and the middle class. We need your help putting the Internal Revenue Service out of business for good. We need to find candidates who will promise to work towards replacing the income tax with a fair tax. If you're willing to make phone calls and meet with candidates in person to secure their support for the fair tax, contact Fair Tax New York at 585-944-0588. Make a difference. Call today. Next Steps with Peter Vasquez and Aisha Kreutz on the WYSL station. And we are very proud to say that the program is brought to you by Ryan Murphy and Associates Commercial and Residential Realty Appraisal and Consulting. Once again, here is the host of the most here, uh, Peter Vasquez. Ah, thank you, Bob, for that. And thank you to our sponsors, of course. And we can't forget the law offices of Christine Dima Vasquez. In studio, we have Dale Sedgwick from Hope Initiative. And the director of the workforce development pro- of the workforce development program at Hope Initiatives, Dr. Vanessa Milton. Ladies, I have a question. And Doctor, I'm hoping you know, with your experience and, and the education you had behind you in these issues as a as a social worker, uh, a high level, I would say, um, uh, and your experience as well from corporate America and what you've seen. Um, but New York State ranks 
18th in the nation with the highest violent crime rates, right? Um, that's what I thought. So at Hope Initiatives, you guys have transformed the idea of Hope Works, which is also your 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 workforce development program's name, right, into a reality. Can you share some of the success stories and how you implemented that? Because a lot of these people that, you know, that we're reading the statistics about are either going to be knocking at your door or you've already worked with them. So mm-hmm. how do you guys work that success stories? How do we overcome it? Well, it takes effort. Um, and uh, first of all, you know, if you have expectations um, for individuals, whether it's in what we do or in the school environment, um, we, it is our expectations that anyone that comes through the door can be successful. And knowing that, then you treat them with humanity. And um, most of the individuals that come to us, they have come from, again, those environments that Ms. Sedgwick already mentioned. Um, And so they come with some baggage. Mm. They come with some trauma. And so we not only give them the classroom skills, because our employability skills are taught in a classroom um, environment, um, but we, um, um, right now I'm using my social work skills (laughs) um, until we can get a social worker, but um, uh, we have to talk to them through some of the issues uh, because the issues that they have in their home life, they affect whether or not they can get to work on time, whether or not we can refer them for a job Mm. um, and feel like, okay, this is going to also allow us to refer other people Mm -hmm. because it's a reflection of us and how we work with them. So we've had um, some, especially as of late, some wonderful success stories Um, because we've had individuals that have come to us with um, the, um, what do you call the bracelet or whatever? Oh, the ankle bracelets. Uh Ankle bracelets even. Um, We've come, they've been young, um, you know, as as, as early as he said, we take them from 18 years and up. Um, And so um, we've tried to work with them basically also where they are, from where they are. Because working with someone who's 20 is different from working with someone who's in their 40s or 50s. Mm-hmm. And so um, still you can come with some issues and the age doesn't determine whether or not how sex successful you're going to be. Absolutely. Um, but we've had a young lady um, in her uh, early 20s who came in, you know, um, and wonderful attitude, which helped a lot. And just through the fact that she learned about the, the occupational skills that we, and she she came to love welding. And um, so <laughs> she loved welding. And she. Um, I just she bought a welding helmet, by the way. Did you really? Well, come really on over did. and visit us. Yeah. Come visit mm-hmm. us. It's a long ride. For um, me I wish now. we had brought a, a brochure so you could see her and her welding hat. Did That's you awesome. just say it's a long ride, really? <laughs> it is. An hour. You drive three hours to come on the show. Drive three hours to go volunteer at Hope Initiative. Okay, I will. I'm trying that, to recruit my husband you guys. used to be on the board. I know. I listen. I love Hope Initiatives. You know, but and and you know, I think it's very important. You were just talking about you know like those stories, right? Are so important, and there's so many success. But you know, my mom, she was a drug dealer. She killed someone. She was in prison. She got out. But you know, moving on to having a business. That makes over $80,000 a year, right, as a business owner. So when people talk about, you know, oh, this is what had happened to you, how you were born, and what you can achieve even through that, right? She can't vote. She can't own a gun, but she has a business, right? Mm -hmm. So programs like this, what you're talking about, and that employability and how that do and how that success is, is so important for people to understand how we're going to solve a lot of these things. But Absolutely. Sorry, go ahead. It was just when you were talking about that, you know, I was just bringing back all of that and how hard sometimes you have to fight and you just need people in your corner to help you to overcome and see that there is a, a hope and a future for tomorrow. And, that, and that's what we have to address. For instance, one of her main issues, which is often an issue, is child care. Mm. And the child care she had was from a family member. But that family member was a grandmother who she had doctor's appointments. And because of that, she some t- a couple of times had to miss at our, our uh, coming to our program, and I had to sit down and tell her, you know, um, first of all, don't sabotage yourself. That's the word that I use because you need to find a more permanent situation for your child. The employer is not, you know, we we love you in here, uh, but they still don't we don't still we don't want you to mm-hmm. to miss. It's not a good excuse mm-hmm. um, because that's not the real world. Right, mm-hmm. and so An expectation. yes, so I had to sit down and help her. Okay, let's call the Y. Let's look up, you know, right there on the spot. And so that was a, a helped to get her 
a more stable uh, uh, child care environment, which is most of the time a major problem for females um, going into work, any pro- program, and definitely into the work environment. And today I'd le- love to say that she is, she had several, um, we brought in one of the, you said tours, we brought in one of the construction companies to just come through and take a look upstairs and downstairs. And um, and as she's going, I'm like, oh, yeah, this person, she's wonderful attitude. She loves welding. So she just happened to be in the welding area at the time she came through and she talked to them and they were very impressed. She had four job offers from that company alone oh, before amen. and she ended up going into, I forget she's building houses now. I forget, Habitat awesome. for, she's Habitat doing Habitat, Habitat for Immunity first and then uh, it's like in a pre-apprenticeship and then you keep yeah. moving on. So that's she's awesome. doing and she she you know sent us an email just thanking us And that's that connection everything. of the other groups. And yeah, the, right. and that's wonderful you know, um, or an older gentleman who had not, he came in not really really sure about the program and kind of leery about downstairs on those machines. Can I get this and that? And, you know, he was early 50s. And so I my communication with him was a little different. But he ended up, at the end of the program, loving it. And were these violent, you know, again, I know we can't, you know, mm-hmm. talk, but it was, he was talking about the violent crimes of things and, right, like a lot of these folks that you're talking about, right, like how you're bringing over the solution to these violent crimes, all of these things that we're seeing that's out there and it's out of control, right? And giving them the sense of purpose. I mean, like, how does that fit in for the solution of some of the violence that we're seeing here? I would say that's that's why we did the program. It's really why. Um, we want to encourage people to, um, to pick up a job instead of a gun, basically. Um, but... Being able to find purpose and find meaning, find um, opportunity, be able to supply. You know, sometimes the crimes are out of boredom. Sometimes, in fact, most of the, you know, we've had people for years to come through Hope Initiatives from various backgrounds. And they'll oftentimes tell you that they'll get in trouble if they're bored. Yeah, an idle mind so is the devil's playground. It, uh, idle mind is the devil's playground. It's, it's just it's completely true. Yeah. And yep. so um, that is one of the reasons that we wanted to begin the program is to get people um, to the point where they are not only self-sufficient, but that they have something meaningful to do. They see meaning mm-hmm. in their lives. They're able to um, take care of their needs. If they're doing something, you know, robbing a store out of, out of desperation, then guess what? A job can help to fix yeah. that. It yeah. gives if them you, purpose. It gives you purpose. If you're robbing a store because you're bored and you're hanging out with your buddies, guess what? Come you're make some furniture. Go, go <laughs> come make some furniture. Come do something with your life. You know, Absolutely. it'll fix that. So it is so fundamental. Um, and we're not just talking any job. You know, start somewhere. Um, and then continue to grow your career. And yes. so we have services not only, That's as Dr. Milton awesome. has described while they're there, but we're we're willing to stay in touch for at least two years after they finish nice. the program to help them continue to grow their career, to pile on additional life skills, whether it's managing your money effectively, et cetera, because we really want to see them proceed and just be successful in that life. That follow-up is so critical. We're running short on time. Dr. Milton, i got a quick question for you since you're kind of new to Hope Initiatives, right? I'm going to put you on the spot. If you were to describe the journey of Hope Initiatives in just three words, other than Hope Works, what would they be? The journey, um, journey as in the organization or as in <laughs> my journey? In three, <laughs> in three words? In three words. The journey of Hope Initiatives. Oh if God. that's part of your journey, too. If you could. It's not the journey of Hope Initiatives. Oh, my. Hope Initiatives, not just Hope Works. Um, well, tr- belief in the power of a stronger power to strengthen our ability to work with others, the least of these. That's um, beautiful. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Hey, Dale, what do you want our listeners to remember about Hope Initiatives? What can they do? How can they get involved? What's your website? And mm-hmm. what do you need? I heard earlier you said you're looking for a social worker. Um, we do have a couple of op- openings right now. Yes, we actually need an instructor. <laughs> Um, a social worker would be a, a big, big help um, on our traditional business. Um, we could use a move and deliveries uh, driver. Uh, <laughs> there, there, there ought to be some available now, given the news with yellow recently, right? Isn't that awful? Mm-hmm. 30,000 people out of work. Um, but in terms of um, we also, we, we certainly welcome donations. Um, we can always, like you said, we're not yes. an organization that receives tens of millions of dollars or you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars by any means. And so we're, we're grateful to a couple of the organizations who have helped us to get started, uh, ESL Foundation and the Community Foundation. But um, they can go to www.makinghopepossible.com. 
and uh, they can support us there right. and you can see what thank, our needs are. Thank you so much. That's makinghopepossible.com. Ladies, thank you for coming on the show. And hey, Bob, I think it's time for... Now, Free Soup with Aisha Kreutz. So, Proverbs thirteen twelve says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but desire fulfilled is, a tree, is the tree of life. Frederick Douglass said, knowledge makes a man unfit to be a slave. Fear is a reaction and courage is a choice. Not everything in culture is good. Family culture, ethnic cultures, work culture. Don't be babies when it all gets pointed out to you. Just because your feelings get hurt doesn't make what you see untrue. Brace yourself like a man. Get to work and start fixing things. Be a leader. Nextstepshow.com. Ladies and gentlemen, makingholepossible.com. They can use your help. Tune in next week while I interview Aisha and we go down the path of the life of Aisha Kreutz. See you in a week. We love you. Es sufrido y he llorado.